today we're going to finish off in Ephesians 2, 4, 5, and 6. And it talks about that in the coming ages, the reason why God was rich in mercy because of his love, which he displayed while we were still dead in our sin, the Bible said Christ died for us to make us alive so that in the coming ages he might display the riches of his what? The immeasurable riches of his grace. That he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace towards us in kindness. <laughs> you know, if you think about that, I mean, God's whole intent, if you have received Christ and been born again, you have been raised into a new person, and the, his whole purpose for you in his kindness is to display the riches, the immeasurable riches of his grace to you. And so how much is too much with God? There isn't. And here's the prayer. Here is a, here's a secret prayer. More of you, Lord. <laughs> More of you every single day and less of me. That's how the gospel comes to us. Now, some of you might not know that after Jesus raised from the dead, it wasn't just the disciples who he appeared to. He also appeared to 500 other people. There were, that there were people that he loved. He appeared to two people walking on a road to Emmaus. He continued to appear to, to make himself known that, guess what, guys? I might have been crucified, but I'm no longer in the tomb. And the thing in the tomb is so powerful for me, the empty tomb. It's that all of us were born. That tomb represents the Father's house we were born into. All of us were born in there. We were all born in a place of being broken where we have that capacity to sin and walk away and not follow God. You know, I meet people all the time who try to decorate that old house. They put in worship music, some few candles in there, and they try to go back in their ancestry, try to find, you know, what, who am I? Maybe it's back 25 generations at Ancestry.com. Or is your new life now in Christ forward? See, God's whole plan in his kindness is to pour into you everything you need to live out the story he has made you for. He paid for your sin, and he also paid so you could have <laughs> immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards you. So how do you live in this immeasurable grace? Well, number one, you've got to admit, and how many times, I wish I could say it's one. But you got to bring it every day and say, Lord, I can't do this without you. Without your grace in my life, I can't be the man I need to be, the father I need to be, the husband I need to be, the friend I need to be. Number one, I got to admit that I can't do it, so I bring it. Number two, I got to bring what's impossible in me to him so he can replace that brokenness with his grace. So you got something impossible in you that you're still holding on to, and you're thinking, as soon as I clean this up in my life, God will bless me. I got to tell you, you're just being religious, and you're going to be there for the rest of your life. Take that impossible thing bring it to him and confess it and say, God, I've been thinking I'm supposed to handle this. This is yours. Mm -hmm. And number three, you've got to receive a whole new way. You know the quickest way to do that? Is you take that impossible thing, you find a truth in God's word. You begin speaking that truth over that impossible thing. And guess what happens? It's no longer impossible because there, there's nothing impossible when you're in Christ. And that's, and then the, just the final thing, spend some time every day sitting in a chair, getting quiet, pray all your prayers out you need, and then take some time to just do this and breathe it in. Father, pour more of your grace into me today. I need it. And sit there, get quiet. Those quiet moments have great power in not only stilling our soul, but in empowering our character for our next steps. So, Lord, I just pray for my friend right now, and I pray you would bless him and fill him with joy 
and let him know today that there's nothing impossible for him or her. That in you, you have made us in such a way that when your grace touches us, it changes our ability to do anything you've given us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you, beloved. I ain't good enough, but he still